Welcome to another episode of Hair Biz Radio with your host Zakira and Mikey. And today we have a very special guest with us on um, Angela Yee. She is a radio personality host of a nationally syndicated radio show, The Breakfast Club. And yes. she is hanging out with us today. Angela, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Doing well, doing well. So we're excited to have you in the building today. Um, this is definitely a treat for us. So just Start by telling the people um, a little bit about you. We know who you are. Everyone loves you. But just tell us a little bit about you. Just in case you've been like under a rock for the last 10, 15 years. Like, let's just move that rock and let them know what's up. (laughs) Well, I am a radio host. As uh, you said, I'm on The Breakfast Club. We've been there for 10 years. We just actually got into the Radio Hall of Fame. So that just happened this year. So that was a big deal for us. That's exciting. Yep. And before that, I was doing Sirius XM Radio for six years. I also have my podcast, Lip Service. And I'm an entrepreneur, so I have a juice bar in Brooklyn, a press juice business yes. called Drink Fresh Juice. I have a coffee company called Coffee Uplifts People, and I'm in business with y'all. Yes. Oh. So <laughs> rewind to uh, the podcast, Lip Service, because that is where we first met you at. Um, and I love the podcast. <laughs> Mike, you want to tell the story about oh, how yeah. we met? Yeah, well, actually, the first thing was we got, um, we did some radio ads. With, that, actually, right. beforehand. Yeah, we did so some we radio did, ads. We did some radio ads, and then, you know, you were the voice of the ads, which mm-hmm. was phenomenal. Yep. Um, but, you know, we had we talked on the phone. I was down in Curacao, actually, because she's all Caribbean. Everywhere she's gone. I was like, where have you gone? <laughs> Caribbean here? There, there's nowhere she hasn't been in the Caribbean. But, you know, I was down in Curacao. I think you were on the call, too, weren't you? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah with the mic. Yeah, Mm because we wanted to be like, we're more than just a hair company, right? And um, I think like the call was just so great and you just seem like such an amazing person. And then uh, we knew you guys were on tour for the Lip Service Mm -hmm. uh, podcast tour. So Mm -hmm. we, you know, I'm calling Mike. I was like, Mike, we spent all this money. We got to make sure we get some (laughs) tickets. So he hooked us up with some tickets, you know. Uh, Thank you, iHeart, for that. And, um, you know, so we got the tickets and then we waited till the end Mm -hmm. because they had like the meet and greet. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And then, um, yeah, then we met. And then where'd we go? We were at uh, in Atlanta. On yeah, because yeah, I told you I was coming to Atlanta also. So we ended up going to the gathering spot. The gathering yeah, spot. Yeah, we yeah, met, we met at the gathering spot. But first of all, the podcast was freaking hilarious. Okay. <laughs> Mikey was in there. We were laughing at Mikey while we were laughing at you. <laughs> it was just a really good time. And um, from the first time we met Angela, she was definitely down to earth. Um, and I love your spirit, love your personality, all of that. Yeah. So I'm excited that we are in business together, getting ready to do this partnership. So, Mikey, tell us about, like, what was your thought with the partnership? What made you choose Angela to start a partnership in Detroit, um, private label extensions? I, it, it was interesting because we kind of, when we were sitting down, we were enjoying a nice, I believe, hair and dura tequila at the gathering spot. Yes. <laughs> and uh, we were just talking. We were talking about, like, you know, Delta Diamond Medallion and this, that, the other. And we right. just kept, like, having all this synergy of same stuff. And I'm like this is like my sister, but my sister's nothing like me. So it's like, it's like my twin, you know? So I was just like, and I just, just randomly threw it out there. Have you ever thought of getting in beauty? And she's like, yeah, that would be like really cool. Yeah. Right. And then some time went by and then COVID hit. Right. Right. And then everybody's like, just everything's a mess. But then just a couple months ago, I, I don't remember why it came up. And I was just like thinking about Angela Right. And I, cause I try to follow you like on Instagram, what she's doing. And she's doing like all these amazing interviews. She's always given back to the community. She's always supportive of like being on these panels to like talk about business and help people. And that's what we're all about. Mm-hmm. So it just really made sense. And I said, Hey, Angela, I would love for you to come down. I'm going to show you my numbers, not like fake stuff that people try to, I was like, look, I'm going to show you like, I showed <laughs> you like literally here's, yeah. here's the numbers. He's like, he turns that laptop screen. I mean the um, desktop screen around. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. She knows the desktop yeah. turn. She knows the desktop turn. <laughs> yeah, that's but, but the thing was, because I'm, I'm very serious about stuff mm-hmm. and I like to make things happen quick. I, I text her. Literally, she's like, hold on, let me check my schedule. 30 minutes later, she texts me back. She's like, okay, I'm, this was like on a Tuesday or Wednesday. She's like, okay, I'll be there Friday. And I'm <laughs> yeah. like, dang, she moves fast. And then I was like, I because I like serious people. For mm-hmm. sure. Right? Yeah. Because, you know, in the beauty and just in any industry, you can get around people that are just kind of like, it's a lot of fluff. People aren't serious. They just kind of like dilly dally around. But mm-hmm. Andrew's like ready to make moves. Yep. And us going, coming out of the pandemic was a time, like I said, okay, we're either going to be the craziest people because we're trying to open three stores, not trying. We are opening three stores right, right now. Um, and coming out of a pandemic, I thought the timing would be right. 
And obviously, Angela has a huge following in Detroit. She has real estate there. There's a huge market there without Mm -hmm. any competition. I'm a little bit, but let's be, you know, I just say any. (laughs) There's like no competition, but like, and I think about like what her strengths are. She's such a powerhouse in media and everything else. And I know like the, on the back end, what we're so strong at. And I was like, geez, together, like, yeah, look, beauty industry doesn't know what's coming. (laughs) So let me ask you a question, Angela, because I'm sure beauty hair and all that was not your first thought Mm -hmm. when it was getting into business. So, um, you run a lot of different businesses. You have the juice bar. Of course you do radio. Why do you think it's important to have so many different avenues or streams of income? Um, and not just things that you actually, like well I do feel like you should be involved with things that you like because it makes you more passionate Mm -hmm. and so everything I've done has been a reflection of something that is important to me like with the juice bar and Mm -hmm. the pressed juices that's because health is important to me and I want to also educate my community about these but and Mikey will tell you like we went to get smoothies and I was like um just so you know (laughs) if it says apple juice or lemonade that's probably not good you have to get like the real fresh fruits (laughs) and vegetables but it is something that I had to learn myself and so I know that if you know for myself it was something beneficial for me to learn it's better for other people to learn too and then even with like doing the coffee company I have a morning show I know how important it is and the fact that coffee is from Ethiopia and Mm -hmm. a lot of people don't know the history because I'm very into when I do something I want to learn the history of it definitely and I want to make sure also for us, like, you know, for us as black women, we need to be more involved mm-hmm. in the beauty business, too, just because we're the consumers. And I think that representative, like, we have to represent that. We have to be owners. We have to be partnerships and all of that in this business that we spend so much money in. And so to me, it just made a lot of sense. And then what I liked about Mikey was working with him. He helps people, like, just out of the goodness of his heart. And that's how I am too. You know, it's not that I want to do something with you because I want to get something in return. Sometimes you just do things. Even when I met with you guys and the whole conversation was like, well, I can help you with your Shopify for your press juices. (laughs) And it didn't have anything to do with what we were talking about. Mm -hmm. It had to do with just something for me that he would get nothing from. You know, and I think for you guys to have embraced me in that way. And then I was like, if you ever want to do something in Detroit, let me know. And then to really call and follow up on Detroit. And I'm all about business, too. And I had this whole conversation earlier where a lot of people aren't serious. They're like, oh, I want to do this. I want to do that. But what are you doing to make it happen? Yeah. And so if you call me and I told you I was interested in doing something and I booked my flight and came right out here because I mean business. And if, you know, even when I did the juice bar, I went to Styles P and I was like, I want to open a juice bar in Brooklyn. He was like, well, find a location, you know, let me know. And I did all of that. And a lot of people won't even take those steps. That's how you know who's serious and who's not. I love that. I love it. So Detroit, is that, what what does Detroit mean to you? Why, Why Detroit? Well, I love Detroit because... It is a city with so much history. You know, it's Motown, it's Mm -hmm. Motor City. (laughs) And I think amazing people come from Detroit. I mean, I worked for Eminem for a long time, too. So I was in and out of Detroit a lot. And I've seen the changes that have happened in the city. And it really is such a black city. It is. (laughs) And a lot of black entrepreneurs. And I love the hustle of it. You know, I was working, I'm working on a documentary on women rappers from Detroit. Oh, nice. So I'm so familiar with it. I have property there and I feel like it's a great investment. And I always tell people, I live in New York. Real estate is super expensive in New York. And you can go to Detroit and buy a home, you know, and not have a mortgage and be able to do that. And property and ownership is important to me. And it should be important to everyone. So you may not be able to buy where you're at, but I bought a house in Detroit for $25,000 and fixed it up. And now that's where I live when I'm in Detroit. And so the fact that you're able to do that somewhere, Mm -hmm. I think people need to look into that. And just to have a city with so much opportunity and it needs our investment, it needs our attention. I know people look at Detroit sometimes and, you know, Mikey had recorded something and they look at it and, and they hear Detroit and they think, oh my God, no. But when you go there and you see what the city looks like now, I think it's really amazing. It's a beautiful place with beautiful people. So definitely. It's just, and I think women in Detroit are always done up. Like they always have their hair done, their nails done, faces beat. They right. always look Facey. amazing the way that, yeah, <laughs> they dress to the nines. I think it's just a great place and a great opportunity for us to be there and be part of that. Yeah, I, I mean, it. but Detroit's just a start. 
Oh, you know, yeah, like just me and Angela have big plans. I'm already <laughs> yeah. talking about like other locations. I'm like, hey, what about here? She's like, what about down there? What about here? What <laughs> yeah. about there? Like, we're kind of like, like hyping like, each other up like about <laughs> all this stuff, you know, and just like having fun with it. So yeah, it's just a start. I love it. So I really, really love this dynamic, the partnership dynamic with Angela and Mikey. So you guys are so similar, but different in so many <laughs> ways. So I was watching the Weave Dealer um, episode where you guys were in Detroit and the floors are in and everything. And so if you look at the stores that we've built so far, everything is kind of in sync and kind of like straight, you know, kind of <laughs> cut. And then you bring in Angela and I love it because it's like, no, I want this and this yeah, and this. You know and we need to look this, this way <laughs> because when women come in, they want to see that. Like they want the the um, people coming out with the menus to show you what the hair is. They want to take pictures on the Instagram wall. So like talk a little bit about, um, and I kind of want you and Mikey to talk about from different perspectives. Um, what is that feel that you want to, what do you want people to feel when they come into the store? I want people to feel like we value them. And I think when you walk into a store and you can see that it's beautiful and mm -hmm. we care about your business. And I know we discussed this. We don't want people to walk in and be like, Oh, this might be too expensive for me. But at the same time, like you guys deserve this posh, lush yeah. experience and it's not too expensive. It's, you know, great price product for uh, the hair. And if you compare it to other companies, there's no parallel mm -hmm. when it comes to even if it's you say the same product, just the price point is so much better. So we're being really fair to people, but also you're our VIP. And mm -hmm. I think that's what we want everybody to feel like when they walk in that store. This is a VIP experience. We care about you. It's not like I'm going to sell you something and get out of here. It's like we want you to keep on coming back. We want you to feel how special we know that you are to us. It's not just that we're trying to make money off of you, but we want to have, like, relationships. Definitely. It's the floors for me. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> and Mikey was like, do you like these floors? I was like, listen, we have to get it. He was like, I agree. It costs a little more, but. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That actually, it wasn't even the cost of the tile that I knew. With the tile, what the pricing wasn't that different, but I knew the installation because mm -hmm. a, a two-by-four tile is this massive tile, and it takes so long to put one tile down. So I knew that was going to be a little pricey, but I was like, <laughs> let's just let's just go for it yeah let's just do it mm -hmm. let's go for it and uh and it's and it's very similar for me when people walk in i want people to walk in and be like they're a little concerned be like okay this place is beautiful <laughs> i'm a little worried am i gonna be able to afford this and then they see like the pricing and they're like oh i'm not telling anyone about this this right. is my secret because <laughs> that's what they do in atlanta where it's like they they like we're everybody's secret Right. You know, it's just like people are just like, oh my gosh, like the, I can't believe I get this hair for this price. How do they do it? I mean, Zakir, I'll tell you, I get stuff. <laughs> it's like an inside joke in the company. Like, oh, Mikey just gets everything for like crazy costs, mm -hmm. you know? So, but what we don't want to do is we don't want to beat people up on price. Like right. we want to make it very affordable. Right. And we were talking earlier today, we have different levels of quality hair because not everyone can, ex uh, can afford that super expensive hair. Right. Mm -hmm. So we have the different levels, but of course you have to have the knowledge to, to let the consumer know like, okay, this is human hair. This is very inexpensive, but you can only do so much with it because right. it's not this hair, but it's way better than that crappy pack hair that they're getting at the beauty supply store. That's junk, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like right. the different, and it's cheaper. And that's why it's so important to train the staff there too. And I know, you know, we do have Danielle here that's training for two weeks yeah. so she can go back and because people come in and have questions and may not have that knowledge. So you need to be able to have some people there. Everybody should know. It's not just that I'm just telling you whatever you're buying and I don't know anything about it. Definitely. It's, I can give you like informed advice on what you should be purchasing for what the purpose is. The, yep. you know, that you're Where looking things for. are. Because you want happy <laughs> customers at the end of the day. Oh, yeah. for sure. And it's nothing like I've gone into the grocery store and I'm asking the person who is working on that aisle, hey, where can I find breadcrumbs? And it's like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I don't even know what those are. <laughs> like, well, <laughs> breadcrumbs are. Grocery store, you don't know. <laughs> so yeah, I think it's super important that people understand the product, know what they're selling, and they're able to help people when they come in. Because a lot of times people don't know. They want right. your opinion because they think that you're an expertise in what it is that you're selling. So I love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you could go in and learn something maybe that you didn't know. Yeah. And also to Mikey's point is, you know, just the way you treat people, is it comes from the top too. Like even from where you get your supplies from, right? Your suppliers, they respect you because they know how you do business. Mm -hmm. They know that you're going to pay on time. They know what orders you're going to place. They know that you're respectful. And then that trickles down for you to be able to have a better price and to be able to negotiate. Ooh. Right. And then that trickles down to the customer because then now I'm getting this at this price. So now I can 
can offer this to you less expensive than you perhaps would get it somewhere else because of my great relationships with my supplier. Yep. Oh, trust me. I just send those new Kobe Pronto Bruce Lee's <laughs> that I bought. I bought like a bunch of like the, you know, I bought like Dallas and Dolly and everyone, a bunch of these shoes. I bought two for myself just cause I was like, these are the hottest shoes. And then, <laughs> and I sent a pair, I sent a pair back to China because you know, my guy saw it and he was like, because you can't even get it there. Yeah. Right. But that's the kind of relationship we have. Right. You know, and, care, and you like we have so many people we could do business with, but wouldn't you rather work with somebody you like that For you sure. think is oh a good person? Yeah. I, yeah. I don't think, and that kind of brings me to my next point. I was having a conversation with someone this week and we were just talking about integrity in business and why it's so important for you to have character, morals, values, integrity, um, especially when you're going into business, when you think about the people who you'll be serving, like, God entrusted you with those people to show them and, you know, take them on that that journey. So it's just important that you have integrity in business. Um, and I love the fact that when Mikey meets people, he's all about bid, building relationships. And that's something that we talked about when we first started with the company is building relationships, not caring what people have, what they're able to bring to the table. Because if the integrity and the relationship isn't solid, we don't want to work with them. Right. And yeah. you never know where a relationship can go. It may not pay off right away. Mm -hmm. Like when I met with you guys, it's not like right away we did something yeah you know it's it was that was last year that was it actually was, it was about two, two years it's all ago. coming up on two years yeah. Now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah that was a long time ago and so nothing happened right away but again like even just taking the time out for you guys to come and meet with me and of course you asked me where i wanted to go because <laughs> <laughs> he's like where do you want to go and, you know, for me taking the time out, like, you know, we both respected each other's time. We were on time, you know, and it was a good experience. Mm -hmm. And so you walk away with a feeling from somebody, either you don't like them from when you initially meet them or yeah. you're like, oh, I do really like that person. And that does matter, like I said, because you have so many options of who you can and cannot do business with. Yeah. And so you always want to make a good impression and be a, a genuine person, not like fakely make a good for impression. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can yeah. tell. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think um, so. The podcast normally it's a hair podcast, but we talk a lot about building business. Mm -hmm. We talk a lot about marketing, all of these different things. So if you could share what is like one tip that you would have when starting to build a business. And then um, aside from that, one lesson you've learned. Um, one tip I would say is have a great operating agreement because oh, yeah. you want to make sure that whoever you're going into business with, it can't just be a handshake deal or an understanding. You have to have your paperwork right <laughs> so that later on down the line, there's no questions. And a lot of people go into business and get partners and then things go left and you never anticipate that. It's like yeah. getting married. You never think the marriage is going to end. Right. <laughs> you go in with the most optimism or you wouldn't do it and things change. And so it's just important to have that agreement in place so that when things do change, you're prepared and you know exactly what's going to happen and you have all that hammered out. So that's one thing I will say has to happen. Um, and one thing that I learned uh, from business, man, there's so many different things, but I would say in business, what I learned is that what's best for you may not be what's best for the business. Mm. And so that okay. is when you have partnerships, it's a, always a give and take. And so you always have to put the business before your own personal. So just because this would benefit me the most doesn't mean it's the best thing to do. And you always have to weigh those things. Oh, that's, that's super good. And I think Mikey does a really great job at that, like focusing on what the business needs versus his own personal, mm -hmm. um, personal opinion. So I think in business, in any business, literally you should be doing that. And then the operating agreement, we've seen some, some things. <laughs> yeah. With people like yeah. crazy, crazy partnerships, people get in yeah. and all this other kind yeah. of stuff over the years. I mean, me and Secure have been meeting with people for, I mean, years, yeah, seven, almost definitely. seven years now, seven, Yeah, you know, but the thing, the real important part about like the business part in this, and I actually talk a lot about this in my, my book that's coming out. Okay. It, book. okay <laughs> book, <laughs> right. uh, uh, so, you know, like the book is kind of like, and I go through a lot of this stuff and it's, it's so important because what people don't understand, if you don't put the company first, Think about what the company supplies. It supplies your personal, probably family, mm -hmm. you know, your staff, your staff's family. Mm -hmm. Like it's always got to be the company first, right? So it's kind of like the investments that I make within this company is to make the company a much more solid company. It's not me going driving a new Lamborghini. Like that's a possibility, but that's not ever going to happen right. 
Like Mm -hmm. we have Mm -hmm. all this real estate to buy, you know, creating like, you know, if we don't have payments on something, how much more secure is everybody's jobs? What if we wrap the Lamborghini with private label extension? Right. Look (laughs) at you. Is it a company car at that point? That boy would that boy would be stolen. (laughs) That boy is gonna be stolen. (laughs) That is definitely an expense that can be written off. (laughs) Yeah, no, but you know, it's just it's just so it's it's true. It's so important. You really you just have to put the company first, even if you're by yourself, like in your solo entrepreneur, mm-hmm. right? And you're just getting into business. You have to really understand what it's going to take. It's going to be consistent. Actually, mm-hmm. someone in our Facebook group today said, why do, why do you think so many hair companies uh, fail? Right? Because people always say, oh, it's such a saturated market. But to be honest with you, right. I know that there's as many people are getting in the market today, getting that out. same amount of people are getting out. Mm-hmm. Right? And I put, it's easy. A lot of people are not consistent mm-hmm. and they don't focus on educating themselves on marketing and building a brand. Yeah, you know, because those are really hard parts. You can hire the accounting, you know, pretty inexpensive. And I always recommend if you have the business, get the accountant. It's not that yeah. expensive, right? If you need some legal help, reach out. You maybe have a friend, mm-hmm. right? So I'm not saying there's stuff. We started this business with nothing. Yeah, you know, think about that. Like there were times when when we first started this, I was just like. We couldn't do a lot. Lo- like I couldn't even take them out to lunch because yeah. I was like, no. <laughs> but even so, like, but even so, with the partnership part is so important. Like, right. what we do with my partners is we don't go expensing about a st- bunch of stuff. Like when we go out to eat, that's my personal credit card. It's not the business credit card. Right. Even when I fly out places, I pay for my own flight and yeah. I take care of it myself in my room. I don't ask any. I just show up. Yeah. Here it it makes it so much cleaner <laughs> yeah. because the importance of the partnership and the relationship between the partnership is so much greater than that $50 meal that could cause right. a conflict. Mm-hmm. And I also think people like to focus on money so much when you haven't made any money yet. And sometimes yes. people oh, <laughs> we talk about this like <laughs> crazy. To pay themselves and y'all haven't generated any money and I know people like that and I always feel like that's a real employee mindset and not an ownership mindset. When your main thing is how can I give myself a salary already when we haven't even generated any in- like right. where's the money come right. from? Right. <laughs> Yeah. So imagine you go to investors and you're asking for money, but part of what you're asking for is your salary. And they're yeah. looking at you yeah. like, are you crazy? What? Yeah, you haven't made no money yet. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When we started Private Label, you know, I was working 50, at least 50 hours a week. Mm-hmm. And I'd work on Private Label 5 a.m. before I'd get home, work on Private Label. We had three employees. We had you, 2.0, and Tiara. Oh yeah. I was technically the fourth employee. Two and a half after two and a half years, I got my first check for a <laughs> right. dollar. And I was so but it took two and a half years. You got a years. check for a dollar? No, okay. it wasn't long. <laughs> but like, like wow. But that's, that's when I left my job. That's when I left my job. I know, but right. you know what I'm saying. But just made I paid myself at that point. Right. But that's sometimes what mm-hmm. it takes. Yeah. yeah. It is true. And like people have to realize if you're doing this for yourself, it's not about, you know, I need a salary, I need a salary. It's okay, let's get this business to be profitable enough so that now we can do this. Yeah. And I think if you believe in the business, then you shouldn't have a problem with, okay, I can wait because right. I believe in the vision of where the business is going. Yeah, I think, I think you know, focusing on money is definitely a huge mistake. You know, we always talk about let's focus on a great experience when people come in the door or mm-hmm. they're ordering online. Let's focus on great products at a great price. The money will, if you focus on those core things for Mm -hmm. the business and Mm -hmm. keep things the way, run things the way they should, the money will come. But if you go attacking that money, it's, it's, your dynamic is just totally screwed up. Right. Yeah. One thing I always say is focus on the people and the profit will come. Yeah, Yeah. for sure. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot of lessons that I feel like I've learned. I couldn't even get into all of them, but you know, that is one thing. And then, I, and like you said about educating yourself, I think it is really important to always be trying to figure out how can I do this business better? Because you see a lot of people during this pandemic, they've had to switch how they do business and figure out other avenues. Yeah. And some people have had to switch their business completely, but we should always be evolving. And I think that's important too, like always trying to figure out how can I evolve like with the times? Because right now, if you weren't doing a lot of stuff online, you you really got hurt during this pandemic. Yeah. As people weren't able to go out. And that's something that, you know, people might have had businesses for decades and never had to do that and now realize, oh, damn, I should have been did that. And so I think it's just always important to keep up with what's going on with technology, too. That's true. I've seen a lot of 
dry cleaners that had that have had to close down because they didn't have an online presence mm -hmm. and they weren't doing um, marketing like they could have been doing. So now their businesses are suffering. Um, but what's something that you learned kind of going through the pandemic when it comes to just business and how you operate? Um, something that I've learned, man, listen, I've learned that you have to be prepared for anything. Yeah. And that's something mm -hmm. that, I mean, I've always kind of felt like that, but I don't think I've ever felt like that more. Yeah. But, you know, in January, I paid off the mortgage for my house, yes. where I lived, which was <laughs> before the pandemic, but I was glad I did it. You know, because it made me feel a lot less stressed. And mm -hmm. I know, like, we all make financial decisions that's best for us at the time. But I'm just glad that I didn't have my money all over the place and, you know, all these different things going on where now t the pandemic hit and I wasn't able to take care of myself. Like, I felt financially stable, so I wasn't as... Uh, you know, I, I was I didn't have as much anxiety as yeah. a lot of people did about what am I going to do now. So I was fortunate that I made that decision and people kept telling me not to. They're like, oh, why do you want to pay off your mortgage? It doesn't make sense. You could take that money and invest in something else and do this and do that. But I'm just glad I did that. And I feel like other investments that I do always has to be money that at least now I know I have a home always. Yep. You know, to <laughs> live in. And so now other stuff I can do, I can I can take those gambles and those risks because I know I can afford to do it. But I just think that's one thing I learned from this pandemic is to just make sure that you feel stable and prepared and that you have your, um, what do they call it, your ducks in a row. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think this pandemic, though, a, a lot of people did lose jobs, but then a lot of people also birthed a lot of new things. Mm -hmm. Like so many people started businesses. So many people were sitting on ideas and literally the idle time gave them the opportunity to just start flourishing and doing what they needed to do. So that's dope. Yeah, the worst thing you could do is nothing. Right. Yes. <laughs> I mean, it, even if you're not starting a business, like I can tell you, I picked up Angela at the airport yesterday around noon. There's She's quoted from at least 12 books in the last 40, <laughs> like, what is it, 26 hours about this book, I this and that. And I'm just, for me, I love it. Like, yeah. I haven't I haven't been reading much lately. I've been listening to podcasts. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just like, that's how I've been consuming my 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 information, right? It's just through podcasts, you know, everyone has their different ways. So like, if, if you're listening to this and you're like, well, I don't really like reading to educate myself. There's tons of, besides this one, obviously, but yeah. there's tons of very educational podcasts, 100% free. You don't even have to buy that book. So there's no excuse. Right. I mean, every every hour she's got some new book, I like something <laughs> from a book, and I'm like, oh my god! Like I, now I feel like I got to keep up. So those are the kind of people you want around you, Definitely. because now I feel somewhat challenged about like well, I must not be reading enough. And it's just doing well. I'm doing okay, but damn, like I, I might be missing out on something here. So I got to step my game up. Yeah. But if you're around people that don't challenge you. Right. And don't have these other skills and mindset and other kind of stuff that's really that's better than yours. Right. You are around the wrong people. The wrong that's what people. they say. If you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. Oh, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's it's so important to definitely surround yourself. You know, if you can get like a mentor or stuff like a lot of people reach out to to me. Like I just got a, a message today. One of the. I get mess oh, one God. message a, one <laughs> message a week on my Instagram. I've been trying to get my Instagram up. I only care about it because of my I want to promote book. my book better. <laughs> yeah, it's all for the book. But you know, someone's like, hey, "Can you like, can I come and you can mentor me?" And I was like, "Well, we're not bringing anyone outside in because of COVID and other stuff." I was like, "But what I'm trying to do is on a larger platform, mm -hmm. educate people with I say with the podcast. I spend all these times doing the videos. I put mm -hmm. all this information in the Facebook yeah. group, like tons of stuff. I spent." you know, seven months on this book already that I think has like all this information, but you can give people the information, That's but if they're not going to consume yeah. it <laughs> and act on it, it doesn't matter. So like for someone like Angela, same kind of thing. She's, she is busy. She's as busy as anybody I know, right? She doesn't have time to, to mentor people one-on-one. -on -one. It's not that she doesn't want to, but she has to also take care of herself, but she does all these different things that you can follow her. If you really connect with Angela, Follow her on Instagram. She's doing this panel that you can get on it for free. You can right. learn all this stuff. That's how you can like follow people because it's not like people don't want to help. It's like how oh, much you free have time to be accepting yeah. of it too, because, and we were talking about this earlier too. I do this wealth Wednesday. Uh, I have this platform called wealth Wednesday and it's free for everybody. And we do things like we had rocket mortgage sponsor and we talk about home ownership and, you know, we had Operation Hope and the Self app. And, you know, we did it with Shea Moisture, this this last um, one that's about to, to air now. 
And this is all information, but this is the stuff that I posted on Instagram. And people aren't like, they'd rather hear the rumor report. Ah, uh, yeah. You know, things like that. But this is great information to help people learn how to do certain things like buy a home or get investment investment for your company or, you know, the one with Shea Moisture is about black women entrepreneurship. And we have a lot of people on here who are experts who you could reach out to them and there's free services that they offer that can really benefit you. But are people really trying to find that? Because somebody will come to me and be like, oh, I want you to do this for me or can you invest in this? And it's like... I just gave you all of these tools. If you right. would, I would, if you came to me and you were like, "Hey, I listened to you know the series that you did for Wealth Wednesday about this, this, and that, and I learned this from you," I'm more apt to be like, "Okay, let me you know reach out to this yep. person and do something than someone who sees that I have all this stuff going on but doesn't even pay attention to it." Definitely. I always um, like to say, and I've heard this quote before, but information changes situations, mm -hmm. and you can get as far as what you do with the information that you receive. Right. Uh, yeah. And, like, you know, people will be like, well, you know, Angela. Like, it's just interesting to me what people care about on, yeah. Yeah, we had some good conversation. Yeah. We're not bringing up names and other stuff. Yeah. And, and, by the way, if you think, like, you're listening to this and you think this is the <laughs> Hair Biz Radio Tough Love episode, <laughs> yes, it is. You guys, like, you you might need some tough love. I mean, this is, like, real stuff. We all need tough love sometimes, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. But, yeah, it's it's so true. I mean, the information that, that Angela gives out is just, it's amazing, but it's so many people would just rather yeah, and I'm learning follow too. the drama. Like yeah. you said, like I'm learning, I'm interviewing people and I'm learning about a lot of different things Yeah, and it's helped me a lot. So I impl I try to implement those things. Like I'm very good at retaining information. So once I hear something, like I'll think about it and I always, like I have all these little tricks to remembering things like saying stuff out loud. That helps a lot. Like that was a trick I learned. I don't remember what book I read that in. But, <laughs> there we um, go. You know, you practice it. Like if you go to a restaurant and you see the waiter and they tell you their name, repeat their name back. And that's oh, how you remember. Oh, like the regurgitation. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And even when I learn like different tips or, or when I'm trying to get ready to do something, I just have to say it out loud. And it helps me so much just to retain information. I'm good with writing things down. So if mm -hmm. I read something and I'm like, okay, I caught that nugget, I'm going to write it down. And then if I go back and read it, it'll eventually be embedded in my head. Yep. Yeah, you definitely are like the planner type, <laughs> write it down, yeah. whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I, I created a planner just because I loved planning and writing things down. I'm like, I might as well just do a planner. <laughs> That's great. And like, you know, and like I always say, people always have to be thinking of ways that they can improve on what they have going on already. You yeah. know, I was um, telling Mikey, I got this situation with Facebook where I'm doing this show for Facebook and it's called Mastery of Comedy. Mm. And that's all about mentorship. And to your point, like trying to get mentors for different things, you know, it's not that easy because the people that you would want to mentor you probably are super busy. Yeah. You know, and especially sure. right now during COVID and everybody's doing Zoom calls all the time. So that's why it is important to have, like I said, reach out with like some real information that shows that you really follow me, that you know what I have going on. And also, if you're looking for a mentor, that you could bring something to the table. Too. Yes, definitely. Like, don't just say, can you mentor me? Be like, well, listen, I see you have the podcast. I would love to help with that. You know, and that's to me more important than even having a mentorship. Now you have somebody that you're helping mm -hmm. and then I'm more apt to be like, let me see if I can help this person get in position because I've helped a lot of people get jobs. And that's just because they've done stuff for me. And I feel like I can. It's not easy to recommend somebody for anything. Oh, right. Yeah, you not. can really <laughs> yeah. you can really. That's a tough one right there. It is. Yeah. I need to see how you work. And, you know, I've recommended people for stuff and they've done a terrible job. And then I've recommended people and they've been great. And so I need to see your work ethic because sometimes I'm like, I don't know what they're like to work with. I'll be honest. Like, yeah, I always do yeah. a disclaimer. Mm -hmm. Always. I'm like, listen, Mikey, I'm going to refer this person, <laughs> but that's only based off of what My I've seen them do. Yeah. From here, I don't want any parts of if, if this does not go right. Yeah. It's like, make your own decision. <laughs> yes. You know, they were good when I did something, but I can't tell you how it's going to be for you. But Definitely. It's, it's very rare that you'll find that person that you're like, I would highly recommend this person. I know they're amazing. And so if I can say that about you, that means that you really are amazing because normally we have to do the disclaimer. Yeah. Like, like <laughs> they was good when we did this thing. It was just one little project. I can't. <laughs> so like, lesson learned, don't be the person that has a disclaimer. Yeah. <laughs> you have to strive to be that person that we can go all out for. <laughs> Definitely. So we talked about reading and all these gems. What are some books that you recommend um, for people to read? Personal development books. 
Well, that's why. So, Mastery of Comedy, I came up with that idea because of the book Mastery by Robert Greene. Oh, that's a good book. I yeah. Actually, when I was doing my um, master's program, we had to read that book and okay. do a paper on it. So, it was really dope. Yeah. Yeah, and I like that. I like when you can have, like, historical references mm -hmm. that really puts things into perspective so you can understand those ideas. So, that was a great book for me to read. I love um, biographies and autobiographies, too, because I feel like... More than self-help books, I learn a lot from other people's experiences and reading about them, yeah. you know? So, like, I read this book called The Operator, and that was about David Geffen and how he built his, like, huge empire. But it was an unauthorized biography. It started off as authorized, and then I guess he changed his mind. But <laughs> even just, you know, how he went about doing business was really interesting to me and how he got to where he got to where he owns, like, all this real estate and all these production, like, everything that he has going on. Now he's... You know, people were mad at him at the beginning of the pandemic because he was on his yacht in Canawan. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Don't be mad. I know, don't be mad. But, I mean, you know, sometimes people aren't as sensitive to... Yeah. What, but he did start off in very humble beginnings. And I do love those stories. Like, I read Tina Turner's um, bi autobiography just recently. And so just, I think I get so many lessons from real-life experiences and people who have gone through things. Yeah that I read their books, and I'm like, wow, that's dope. I was reading about this woman, Diamond Doris. It's her um, autobiography, and she was like an international um, diamond thief, jewel thief. Oh, wow. I've yeah, never she's heard a black of that. Oh, I think woman. I've heard of that. Really? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're doing a movie about it. I think they did a documentary, but they're doing a movie. But that was interesting to me to just even see how – she was able to steal all this. <laughs> all, all these, these diamonds? Yes. I got to read that. But <laughs> even just how you can take what uh, you can anticipate from, like, somebody working in a store and how you can manipulate things, like, all of that, just human nature things that are real life stories are really interesting to me. Oh, that's yeah. dope. I have to get into more autobiographies because I read a lot of just self-help books, mm -hmm. like, straight. Um, I think the last self-help book I read was The Millionaire Next Door, um, and that was really good. But, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and I read uh, Obama's book, of course, because we interviewed oh, him. Yeah. Oh, Barack nice. Obama's yep. book, yeah. Did you oh, read yeah. uh, the uh, Becoming? Did you read Michelle? I read Becoming, okay. and I went to see her at the Barclays when she went on her tour nice. to Michelle oh, wow. Obama. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I think it's like for the autobiographies, especially if you see where kind of like you see people where they are today, mm -hmm. right? And autobiographies can give you a real look of where they came from. Yeah. Right. Like people look at me today. They think I'm famous because I have 1800 followers on Instagram. <laughs> but look, you no. are <laughs> right. But just kidding about that. But no, like I, I, I'm very upfront about people. Like when I started this company, my first company really failed. Mm -hmm. It was during, you know, the tw 2009 when a lot of stuff failed. But still, like it failed because I wasn't as prepared and I didn't know much as much about business. Mm -hmm. I was completely still wiped out and kind of trying to re rebuild the money that I invested in this company. I borrowed from my mom. It was a $7,000 investment. And you know, my business partner has plenty of money. So he's like, yeah, $7,000, luckiest guy in the world. <laughs> we are now. But look, like, but it was like that extra. So you have two things, right? So you can, uh, you can ha either have like a good foundation of money mm -hmm. and you can probably do less work yourself. You can hire a lot of people right away and do stuff, but it doesn't mean like if you don't have any money, it doesn't mean you can't start something amazing. Right. But realize real deep inside that you understand you are going to have to put in way more work than your friend that already had that job paying 200 grand a year and has all this money. And then, you know, mm -hmm. it was a side hustle that turned into this big thing, right? You are going to have to be dedicated. You're going to have to continue to invest. When you make that first hundred thousand in sales and you have like 10, 20 grand in profit or something, you are not out at the club. Like you're a baller all right. of a sudden you are not a, a baller. <laughs> okay. Like you need to take all that money and reinvest it back in the business. Yeah. Right. It's so important. So even if you are listening to this and you feel like you're just kind of down and out, trust me, you're not alone. People have been there. People have gotten out of it and you know, you just have to, you have to be great. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a lot of dedication and a lot of educating yourself and a lot of paying attention to what else is going on out there and networking. And I can never stress the importance of networking enough. That's why we're all here right now. For right. sure. <laughs> you know, honestly, like just to make sure that you build good relationships, you can't just be in your cocoon and think you have to do everything by yourself. Yeah. And it is so important to realize you should not have to. It, that's too much on you. 
Definitely. And so if that means that you have to know what your strengths are and have people around you that complement those and, um, you know, they're, they're good at this, but I'm good at this. So now we can come together and, you know, but it's important to know it doesn't just have to be me. I don't have to have an idea and I don't want anybody else to know what my idea is because I don't want them to steal it and run with it. Yeah. You just have to figure out how can you work with other people because you doing it alone, you can't be the person that's in charge of accounting and marketing and sales and there's so many different roles that have to happen and you know it's just important for you to know that it's not just you by yourself definitely and don't be afraid to ask for help yeah. I know a lot of times it's like I can do this on my own but sis you can't mm -hmm. and that's <laughs> yeah. okay yeah and sometimes we feel like you know it's hard for people like I know I don't like to ask people for help necessarily me either yeah, I had to it's get a hard thing to do over that yeah mm -hmm. you have to get over it and you, you have to speak up because I feel like the people that have been really successful are the ones that speak up and reach out to people and make those bold moves mm -hmm. where you're like, let me call this person. And so you never know. And one thing I did learn, too, was college, right? The alumni network that you have if you went to college to be able to tap into that. Oh, I know yeah. people who have gone to these universities and made cold calls to some of the alumni and gotten funding. And, wow. invest, and mm -hmm. part of what you pay for when you go to college is access to that alumni network so you can get those things done. And so I just want to uh, recommend, like, sometimes it's as easy as you sitting down and making a list of people who you know, who you can contact. And then every day, maybe you say, I'm going to make five calls a day and eventually something will happen. But you have to really put it out there. That's dope. I like that um, that tip because it's like you went to school, you spent all this money. You better get your money's worth. Yep. Utilize your network. Mm -hmm. Do what you do what you need to do. I love that. Yeah. I know this one guy, he got um, he got a couple of alumni. He went to Georgetown. Mm -hmm. And he tapped into that alumni network and they they'll let you access that. And he got funding for his company just from that. And they didn't know him, you know, wow. but there's people whose job it is to invest. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're investors. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Have you heard of the new uh, marketing tool that's out called Clubhouse? Oh, yeah. I'm on Clubhouse. OK. Yeah. So there's a lot of um, different <laughs> Angela's laughing. Why are you laughing? There's just too much on there. There is a lot going on on Clubhouse. It's overwhelming sometimes. Yes, it is. But there, it's a great place to make connections and meet different people. Um, and you brought up investors. I know on Clubhouse, there's a lot of investors who have invested in businesses that they've seen come through Clubhouse. So mm -hmm. that's definitely a, another avenue. Yeah, people, use yeah. every avenue that you can. And sometimes, like I said, you got to just... Take a moment, sit down. Let me make a list of yeah. all these different ways that I can get this done and make it happen. Yep. Don't you want to know if I'm on Clubhouse? Um, I already know Mikey's not on Clubhouse. I was about to say, I don't think you're How on Clubhouse. You know? <laughs> no. You know too much about me. <laughs> <laughs> Mikey's definitely not on Clubhouse. Why, but wouldn't, I, why wouldn't I be on but Clubhouse? But you know what? It wouldn't be bad because it's kind of what you do in your Facebook group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm going to send you an invite for Clubhouse. You only get one, I thought. I have, yeah, well, yeah, when I got on, I, I had one originally, and then they gave me like three more. Ooh, so I have like one left. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Yeah. I'll send it to you. If, if you're going to use it, I'll send it no, to you. No, I'll use it. Yeah. <laughs> Don't make her waste her invite. <laughs> no, 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 no. I know it's I know it's a big deal. So now that we're all together, and I just kind of want to throw this thing out here because, like, you know, we talked about beauty, and then mm -hmm. it was like, you know, a, over a year, you know, when was your pod, podcast tour? Do you remember? The, um, the months? That was last year. Do, what months? It was in November, October, November. Okay, so it's been just over a year. And, you okay. know, we, we started this whole process months ago. We mm -hmm. just weren't, like, putting it all out there yeah. and stuff. Um, you know, because we met up in Detroit. Right. We looked at all these spaces, mm -hmm. driving all over town, <laughs> you know, and all that. So one idea I have, you know, because I even told Angela, we were sitting here yesterday, I was like, Angela, like, this is just, like, the beginning. I'm sure we're going to come up with some other, like, big idea, some mm -hmm. other thing that, you know, because we can, we can probably hire people or have something developed or something that can, it can happen fast and not too much of our time, right? It's just, we have the skills, mm -hmm. right? And that takes time. You know, people ask, how do I do this website so fast? I was like, I've been doing this 15 years, yeah. right? Like, and I'm a geek. So I'll, yeah, I can build a website in an hour and it yes. looks great, you know, but. And you sit there with him and he's just buying domain names. Right. right? <laughs> oh, I bought, yep. what did I buy today? Uh, foreign fashion. Because wow. you know, all these girls want to be foreign. I'm like, girl, you're from like Birmingham. You that's you're foreign, Alabama, foreign. Right. okay. We're you know, all foreign. We're but, not from here. But I'm right. putting we're it out there. Foreign. I'm putting it out there because I talked to her. I kind of put a little hint out there last time you were here, like last month was, 
I talked about my book almost being mm-hmm. done. And like today, actually, I wrapped up the manuscript. The manuscript is today. Wow. Like the, is today? Today's the last. Yeah, I had my meeting at 1130 while you were next on door. Schedule. So, yep, on schedule. So it's <laughs> it's done. But I said, I told Angela, because we, we do come from like, we're so similar, but come from very different backgrounds and mm-hmm. such. And like where she is like in the media and me kind of behind the scenes and other stuff about eventually maybe we would write a book together. Right. And I, th- and I try to think what we could write about. And I think we've just had just very different experiences talking about the importance for like a business book about partnerships and relationships. Mm, because, because like where we are going good. today, mm. right. Where we're getting started with our Detroit store. And I know, <laughs> I know how hard I'm going to push next year just because, you know, it's like the ball's really rolling now and where kind of, we started this and how fast we get in such a short period of time is because of like partnerships and relationships. But then also reflecting back on the reason why we can do this so fast and be so great here is because all the hell we went through through the earlier years of business. Yeah. Yep. We didn't trade them for the world. <laughs> yeah, but, but, you <laughs> but have to I was go saying that earlier. We learned the most from things that didn't go well. Like I learned so much every time. And I, I never look at it like it failed. I just look at it like things didn't work the way that I anticipated. Yeah. And what did and you I learn? To, what yeah. was the lesson? <laughs> and I yeah. had to um, regroup. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's one of those things like obviously fail forward. Very popular statement. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. fail forward. And I usually tell people like hurry up and fail and just get in all the way because it's going to happen. Right. Yeah. You know, but you guess what? You got to dust yourself off. You got to get up and get your feelings out of the way and like keep going. Because honestly, it happened to everyone's gone through this Mm -hmm. like you're not going to skip around this it's just how it's just how business is yeah Yeah. it is that's funny we were talking about that with the comedy thing i'm doing one of the comedians was saying that um he always tells comics like you know and he always felt like he's happy when things don't work out and like he gets booed or whatever or he has a bad night on stage because it has to happen sometimes yeah for sure that's That's how you fix it yeah Mm -hmm. and so it made him not like upset because some people that'll happen to them and they'll be so depressed, like, I'm giving up. I yeah, can't I'm not do doing this. this anymore. But then some people will be like, man, I got to get back on stage tomorrow because <laughs> things didn't work out yesterday. So when's when's that serious? Because actually when she told me about it and the idea and everything, I was like, wow, this is actually really cool. Mm-hmm. She lit- like Angela literally <laughs> came up with the idea, the whole set up. Literally, she told me like one minute and then like the next day she's like, yeah, well, we're going to be filming on this day. <laughs> yeah, I'm I did, like, I did. she did it like, I you love know, it. it's Execution like- Execution at its no, finest. But it's like this We The Culture program. And so you have- have to pitch these ideas and they picked me for you know I had three ideas they picked one of my ideas and I had to like start filming right away because it has to be done before the end of the year oh, I have to start okay. like yeah. airing the first episode so I'm aiming to get the first episode out on the 23rd right now we're doing the of editing December? process yeah <laughs> it wasn't a game like yeah. I literally put out the casting call and the next day we ended the casting and but really hundreds of people submitted you know, so that was really great for these comedians. They had to submit like footage of themselves on stage for the up and coming comics. Mm-hmm. But things like that are important to me. Mentorship, I think, is so important. So we filmed them on the first day where they came in and did their routines and it wasn't polished, but you could see the potential. Mm-hmm. By the second day, they sat down with their uh, mentor and we had Donnell Rawlings, we had Ida Rodriguez, we had Roy Wood Jr., and we had Carlos Miller. And they got mentored. And the next day, when I tell you the improvement that they had was, like, incredible. And you could see even, like, I think it means a lot to you as a mentor, too, when you help somebody and see the results of what you've put into them. Yeah. And so even to see the difference in 24 hours, how much that can really help, it just goes to show you in every avenue of life, not just comedy, if you just reach out and help somebody, it can make such a huge difference in their life. You know, one of the up-and-coming comics was like, I thought I was going to have to... He has four kids and he was saying, I felt like, you know, I was about to go tell my kids I got to get a job. You know, this isn't working out for daddy. And then I got the call. And even though it wasn't like a ton of money that he got or nothing big happened yet, it just means a lot to know that you're headed on the right path. Yeah. And just even something small that could help you out with what you have going on can reignite that passion in you. Because it's hard out here. You know, you can get so discouraged and feel like nothing's working. I don't want to do this anymore. And it could be one thing that could change your life. Yeah, it I gives like you that it. hope. Yeah. And I, and I always talk about it is where, you know, sometimes with that with that mentorship or you really focus on the education, right? I think I think we talked about this before in for our online business. So in we started in 2014, we had a good mm-hmm. year. 2015 yeah. got a little better. 2016 is going pretty good. And I said in the end of 2016, I was like, how are like I know how to do all this stuff, but why is it like we're not really growing right now? 
And I just really realized, I said, true to myself, I just don't know how. So I took this online course. It was like some of the top online marketers, SEO people. It was like $1,000, right? So I took this course and I went through it and I was like, oh my God, it kind of like all the light bulbs started <laughs> turning. I was doing like, I was so close doing this, but then it was like, you really had to do that. Like it's close, but not there. Right. Our sales in 2017 tripled. Wow. And then doubled again, basically for 2018. We ranked fastest growing companies. Number 278 with zero funding, yep. impossible. It was actually funny because I we were at the conference, right? The big ink conference. And there's all these people here and they're all these exciting businesses and everything. And they're just like, oh, what do you do? I'm like, well, you know, I have like this hair company. And they're like, oh, well, no. like we're sitting <laughs> at the table. Like, oh. And they're like, oh, what did, uh, what, you know, where did you rank? And I was like, oh, 278. They're like, wait, hi, what's your name, please? And like, all, all of a sudden, they're excited to meet you. You know, but it was one of those things, focusing on that education. I can't stress it enough because sometimes you're close. You, you, you're you going to put in the hard work and everything else. But if you don't if you do not do it in a smart way, you're right. wasting your time. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, so education, I think, is it's so important. And then also, you know, coming to the partnerships and relationship stuff, right? So... Mm-hmm. Um, I ordered some coffee today, you did? <laughs> some Brooklyn coffee. Yay. Okay. Um, and I was checking out her website mm-hmm. and everything else. And there's definitely like stuff that I could help you with mm-hmm. in no time. Right. And like I said, I have no time, you have no time, but there's certain times that you make time right. and it's okay. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, mm-hmm. You make those sacrifices, right? Like, so, um, you know, the site's built on WordPress, which is fine, but there's definitely some little tweaks and some other stuff, um, that could be done to help with the site. So, you know, it'd be interesting to implement that, see if it makes a difference. Some right. of the marketing stuff, some of the retargeted stuff, some of the stuff we talk about a lot on the, yeah, podcast, on the podcast, it makes a big difference. We're talking like, you don't have to put in a lot all the time, to get like a big return, right? right? Because some of the stuff you spend a little bit of money on at first, start with that and you get the big return. And then it's like that dial where you start spending more and you get like a decent return, you spend more, but you, you know, depending on how fast you grow, you know, you can keep fooling with that dial as I call it. Um, But I got some coffee from uh, Bali. So you have the coffee from Bali. (laughs) So do you know about the coffee in Bali? Like there's different types. So there's coffee in Bali because I I went to this um, coffee plantation there. So they have that animal. I forgot the name of it. And I should have researched it for this, but I didn't think I was talking about coffee today. (laughs) But they have this thing where like you, they go around and they actually eat the beans and, and then, then they, they poop yep. the beans, oh, they take wow. it out, and then... It's supposed to be really special for us. Yeah, yes. That, but, you know, yeah, so I yeah. did. I, I've had that That's coffee interesting. before. That's interesting. That coffee is strong. I bet it is. It has more than just coffee beans. Oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> right. That thing had me pumped up. I, I was like seven feet it, tall when I, I had that. Bali, but I also don't drink coffee, so... So, yeah, it was just okay. one of those things yeah. we just... I don't, it's just one of the things you do in Bali. That's right. cool though. But like, it's kind of cool, yeah. like doing the whole experience. So we order some coffee. I don't even have because we use Keurigs here, so you guys don't have the K cups. But they do make a K cup that is like uh, you can put the grinds in the K cup, and then you can put it in oh, the that machine. Way you can you, right? That so would be actually be good. that would actually be a nice accessory you guys sell on your website. No, you're right because a lot of people are like, do you guys have K cups? And we don't. But you don't need to have a K cup because they you make some. The it's reusable, and honestly. I need to get a new one of those because ours got like old or something. And um, because the K cups actually waste a lot of plastic mm-hmm. and it's like every time you have a coffee, you're oh, wasting yeah. plastic, you know, but with, with this, I can take the grinds from your coffee put and it put it in and it's reusable, reusable and every, it's super easy to clean out everything else. Yeah. All right. Good you guys got to get some good tea. Things. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tea's next. Um, you know, it's funny. I didn't used to drink coffee, but I think like, there's great coffee out there. You yeah. just have to know which kind that you like. And then I also like to do things like mocha where, you know, so it's not necessarily just coffee. Okay. Oh, because I love my thing, mocha. Yeah. <laughs> Cause my thing was espresso all the time. Right. But I would drink it like with ice and Bailey's. Ice and uh, Bailey's. Yeah. yeah. Delicious mm. by the way. And so the only, oh, go ahead. And it'll wake you up. The only coffee that I really drink, if I do drink, is like a caramel, my mac- caramel macchiato, or mm-hmm. like something like that. But black oh, coffee, I can't. I can't do black coffee. Yeah, me or- neither. But you know, I think that people also, and this was something I learned too. You know, we a lot of people drink coffee but don't know that much about it. Yeah, and so it becomes more interesting. Yeah, actually. once you know more about it, yeah. and you even see like how the coffee beans, because you you can't. There's no machines that can pick coffee for you. So that's why it's like a very tedious thing because it's all grown like on hills. And so people have to really, and for a lot of economies in um, different countries, 
a lot of their economy relies on coffee, but then they're not compensated properly. So there's a whole thing behind that too, that there's a big push to make sure that it's more fair to the farmers. Yeah, I've seen like the fair trade coffee Mm -hmm. before, stuff like that, yeah. That's Mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah, I've heard about that for sure. Yeah, and and like I said, when I learned that coffee was studied in Ethiopia, I didn't know that. I didn't know that either. That yeah. was new when you first And that said just it. made me feel like, oh, okay, this is our thing. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So um, you're very well-versed. Like, Angela, just listening to you, hearing you talk, what you do, the things that you implement, I love it. Um, it's definitely a great example, especially for young black women in the community to be able to, for me to be able to sit here and talk to you about that, but then also for people to be able to hear you, what you do, um, what you talk about, and just the personality and the, the spunk that you bring to um, who you are, what is one thing that you would want to leave the listeners with um, before we go? Um, one thing? Okay. Yeah, so many. <laughs> like, okay, can I think of one thing that I want to <laughs> leave people with? I think just what we've been talking about is basically that you do have to, the worst thing you could do is nothing. Mm-hmm. And I know I said that earlier, but a lot of us have really great ideas and things that we want to do, and we talk ourselves out of it. And don't talk yourself out of it. Just do it and make it happen. But make sure that you do it in a way strategically that you have less of a chance that it won't work out. And that means to prepare yourself. That means to do your research. That means to write a business plan. That means to make sure that you figure out who you need to partner with. That means to make sure that you network. The whole setup of it might take years even before you start doing it. But at least put it in motion and get it going. And make it happen and stop telling yourself that, oh, this isn't going to work. And stop listening to people that tell you something can't work. If you're really passionate about it, do the research and figure out how you can make it happen. Don't ever have those regrets later when you see somebody else do something that was your idea initially. And you're like, damn, I had that idea. I've had those moments. And I'm like, (laughs) you know what? That was a really great statement for people who struggle with imposter syndrome. Yes. Yes. And so many of us. And, you know, they say black women struggle with imposter syndrome Mm -hmm. more than anybody else. Yeah. And so it is just something where instead of feeling like this is not something that you're supposed to be doing, we're not, don't tell yourself, oh, we're not good at this. Oh, you know, historically we can't do this or we can't do that. That's absolutely not true. You are just as capable as anybody else. It's just the difference is, are you going to do it or are you not going to do it? That's the only difference. And the worst thing that can happen is, Nothing. Right? <laughs> and the worst thing that could happen is it didn't work out. But guess yeah. what? You at least attempted to start a business. You learned a lot along the way. You made some great, strong connections mm-hmm. so that the next business you do won't fail. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I think, you know, I've been through so many businesses before to get to this. Mm-hmm. So it's, yeah. but everybody, you know, but yeah, imagine if you just gave up and we're like, well, this didn't oh work out. So I'm not meant to be an entrepreneur. Yeah. It's horrible. You know, you got to you got to just keep going, going with it. And, um, you know, I just want to say, like, I'm so excited, obviously, to have Angela here. And, you know, I think she's going to be an amazing. I already don't think I know she's yeah. going to be an amazing <laughs> partner for private label. And, you know, we we have these big, huge plans that I know are going to happen. We are bringing private label to a city near you yes. uh, very soon, very fast. People are going to be like, wait a second. How wow. did you guys do that? <laughs> Like, look, we, water on the ground we're working, right. <laughs> we're working, we're working. So yeah, I'm just, I'm so thankful that we, you know, we re- reply to each other's text messages and we kind of like put in that it's, it's both ways. Like you both have to put in effort yeah. to make things happen. And, um, I'm just, just like, you weren't sure. Like I could have been like, I don't know if they're serious. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> but I definitely will test it out. And just like the vibe I got when we sat down and met, I was like, okay, I think if you're a good judge of character, I'm, it doesn't always work, but you can kind of tell. And then you just take those steps to see and feel it out. Are they doing what they say they're going to do as we progress and as we keep going and yeah. everything happens. Like this was probably one of the smoothest things. Yeah, wow. for sure. Yeah. Well, I love it. I'm super glad that we got a chance to sit here with you, Angela, on the podcast. Thank you for joining us. Um, this is super special for us. But do you want to share with the people where they can find you at? Um, website, Instagram, all that information. Um, of course. And I want to say this is like your calling, too, by the way. You should be interviewing people all the time. Don't so. make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> Look, that's why I have the. That's why I have her as the co-host. I, I love, said. love. No. Like, if you watch the very first episode Mike and I did of yep. the podcast, I literally would be embarrassed. (laughs) Listen, I I still have the very first time I ever was on the radio. And, you know, that's what it is. Like, you progress. The more you do something, the more comfortable you get with it. The better you get at it. The more you study what you did. 
And like, I think you did an amazing job. And so I think you should definitely make sure you keep on doing this because it is definitely a calling for you. Yeah. What, what you was so that much. text message you got from me? Like Friday, no, Saturday night at like eight o'clock at night, which I never, you know, I always leave other staff alone, but I texted you. Remember? Oh yeah. This past, right? Yeah, yeah. It was about the podcast. Uh, you were uploading the new episode and you said, oh, you said you look great and you sound great too on the podcast. I was like, this is like, yes. our podcast is so good. Yeah. You're so good at this. Like we just, you know, we just have to continue to be consistent with it and yeah. it will reach a lot more people and help a lot more people for right. sure and then sometimes you happy nobody's seen that first one yeah like, like, we get a little better first <laughs> that first episode though that first, or when we first start recording we didn't start recording until episode maybe like seven or five, oh yeah because it was no. audio originally right. but yeah. even from that first episode and then the first video episode i was yeah. like yeah mm. <laughs> a long way when i listened to like my first radio I, when i first started at sirius people didn't know i was on i didn't want anybody to know because i didn't and want people to hear me because I was like, I kind of suck. And so then I got more comfortable. Then you start to get better. It's the kind of thing that you only get better the more you do it. Yeah. You know, so it's good. That you seem like super comfortable. You ask great questions and very Thank personal. You. So. Thank you. I think originally I hated my voice. I hated hearing that. We all hate our voice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you have a great, unique voice, too. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate that. So oh, I'm for me, <laughs> Angela Yee on Instagram, at Angela Yee on Twitter, on Facebook also um, is Angie, uh, no, is it Team Yee? Yeah, I think it's Team Yee. And um, yeah, that's how you can find me. Everyone. Dope, dope. Well, I'm super excited about the partnership, everything that we have going on, you individually and then collectively with the company. It's going to be really amazing. After Detroit, they're going to start popping out like. <laughs> yeah, it's about, it's, we're going to be popping all right. Any yeah. last words, Mikey? Yeah, no, I'm just excited to see where 2021 is. I know this has been a rough year for a lot of people, you know, mm -hmm. me personally, everyone personally. Um, we're very thankful for the support of our clients and everything else. We've had, we've actually made some really successful entrepreneurs this year. Um, you know, I know there was this big push and honestly, there's not a big talk about it right now, but a big push to help out block entrepreneurs. It's kind of really faded off, but I want to make sure everyone knows private label is going to continue to do their part mm -hmm. and support, uh, the people that support us. Uh, so like my laptop initiative is going to keep, keep going. We're going to oh, continue yeah. to give out, uh, wigs to cancer patients moving into 2021. Uh, we did a lot, a huge amount this year. Um, so we're going to continue to help as best we can. Yes. Love That's it. why I love it. Love it. So make sure you guys follow us on YouTube. Um, you can check the podcast out on all platforms uh, where they have streaming. Make sure you subscribe, like, and comment. Um, make sure you leave some comments. Ask us questions. If you have some topic ideas for future podcast episodes, let us know. All right. Bye, guys. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>